29 people have tested positive to the coronavirus disease. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Kenya remains 31. 124 people have tested positive. So what comes to my mind when I hear abortion, it's more of giving the power to the lady to decide over her body on what she wants. It's more of giving her the knowledge she needs and the option to choose what she needs. This is a reproductive health issue that women sh should get access and comprehensive um, information as well as the, uh, the services. There are two types of uh, safe abortion. Yeah. So we have the medical abortion and the surgical abortion. So medical abortion is where you use the pill and surgical abortion is where you have the MV. And also, according to our constitution, they are ag agreed upon under certain circumstances. The termination of a, a pregnancy before it reaches its full term. Extraction or removal of um, a fetus before uh, it reaches nine months. Is the termination of pregnancy. And basically, I think of two types of abortion. the safe and the, and the unsafe abortion. I just think of uh, my sister there, my daughter there, my mother there, who was conceived. And uh, this is unplanned pregnancy. And because of resources and the burden of other kids, the only option she has is to get rid of this pregnancy. Uh, my perception is that it's, it's a choice. It's a choice that every woman should make for herself, whether she wants to keep the baby or not, just like pregnancy, and just like even using contraceptive and all that. Abortion is it's not a crime. It's actually, whether intended or unintended, I think it's a right, it's a freedom that every woman deserves. It depends with why um, uh, I need to do the abortion. So it's not like you you will be fixed fixated like it's a it's a sin it's not supposed to happen or it's supposed to happen it depends on an individual. It's a choice because I think that all the girls as well as the women should have the choice to choose on what they want to do with their own bodies as well as um, on what they want to do with uh, their own lives. Abortion is a reproductive health right. The universal health coverage itself aims at um, uh, providing access to quality and also affordable healthcare services. And under healthcare services, we have the maternal healthcare services. So, um, and uh, even when you look at the statistics, uh, the five big causes of maternal mortality. Abortion is one of them. So if you're able to um, reduce the deaths caused by maternal mortality, uh, the deaths caused by unsafe abortions, at the end of it all, we'll be able to reduce maternal mortality. It has been proven from research, as well as information globally, that most of them die from unsafe ways of procuring. And this means that the access to, to the safe ways is very, um, it's very vital to ensure that we save their lives. Just as much as we need to go on with our daily life activities, you ensure the woman is feeling safety, he or she is comfortable with her life, and she is in a position in deciding what she wants. So if she's not ready for getting pregnant, that is why we have abortion at place. I have, the, I have my own right to decide if I want to get the baby or not. It's a fundamental right. and. 
uh, it should be part of the package of SRH uh, services. And because of societal uh, perception, ideology, it, it, it has become such a big deal, an elephant in the room, that we cannot really speak of it. We cannot even get some of the services. First, I want to speak about social injustices, such as against women, such as rape, especially in the slum areas where I live. I also want to, think, to speak about issues such as incest and all that. So women need, need abortion services because it's so unfair for them to be left to the burden of taking care of a kid. They even regret seeing a kid that depression, there's, there's a lot of depression in seeing the kid and trauma. Number two, there's unmet family planning need. And that is not, women are not to be blamed for their unmet family planning needs we, because, they, because of the structures that exist. So I think if, if, if the, the structures don't allow women to use family planning, and so at some point they are left but they left at, 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 at the mercy of the society. For me, I think with that, they should be allowed to access abortion, safe abortion services. If uh, the mother is at risk due to the pregnancy, something else might be that maybe the abortion is supposed to be done because uh, the woman doesn't need the baby. Maybe if the baby wasn't planned for or this is an unwanted pregnancy. And also, in case of incest, and then a pregnancy came about. I don't think if it's right to have that baby. I do know a lot of people, a lot of young people who have had uh, a safe and unsafe abortion. I know a lot of people who've had especially unsafe abortions, especially in the community I live in. I also know people who've, 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 who have been able to link to access safe abortion services. I know several who have done abortion. Um, I've referred one. I know a few girls and women who have had the service. Basically from where I come from, it's Mukuru Kwanjenga. We've had like many instances of unsafe abortion, but we also have like other organizations who come on board to help girls in accessing safe abortion measures. Personally, I've referred so many young girls. I've referred women. So I know of a couple of people who have had uh, access to safe abortion. I know of a mother whose uh, life was in danger because of her pregnancy and she was able to access safe abortion. We have seen that a lot of, a lot of um, young girls and women face so much stigma. So when they speak to a nurse, a doctor, a counsellor online, they have the confidence to actually speak more and speak about the issues and also get the services. It's a very good platform. Sustain I want to think, I'm thinking about sustainability and especially for the young people. So for me, um, digit, di the digital world is a very innovative place to start from, especially in the access of, uh, of SRHR services and information. For the online platforms, there are very key areas that help young women like us. So for example, I might be able, maybe I might be afraid to go and face someone to talk about maybe something like sexual productive health. Because I don't know if uh, I'm open enough, but I'm able uh, in my own free will to be able to Google online and I get the right information and I'm able to type anything without, being, without the fear of being stigmatized or anything. It reduces a lot of uh, stigma, uh, the anonymity increases anonymity and also gives a woman the safe space whereby she can freely, uh, freely get these services. SRHR platforms have in one way been a very effective way to go and getting the services. I understand we still have the issues of stigma and discrimination when it comes to access to abortion, but having it um, through online, it's one way of giving the lady the confidentiality she needs. First of all, the stigma that is in the society and discrimination 
it gives you no choice but to go to that person or that place that you think this person won't judge me or won't stigmatize me, won't discriminate me after I get the information. There's a lot of stigma associated with abortion. So I'm not, if I'm not able to ask my friend, it would be easy for me to send a message or ask someone who I don't know because it's so anonymous and confidential. So um, even for myself, if I need services and I feel stigmatized at home, so I would rather do it online than asking a friend or than going to the facility because of the stigma at hand. One, anonymity. Uh, for me, let me take it as I, as a young lady, I wouldn't want due to societal, different factors, societal, cultural, uh, uh, stigmatization. I would really want to be as anonymous as possible. So one thing that uh, an online platform gives is that anonymity. And another thing is uh, easily accessible. The online conversation or maybe the online platforms, they have been able to bridge that information gap between the, the young people and the service providers and uh, the professionals who we have uh, when it comes to reproductive health. So many effects of COVID-19 in the country because we have seen some of the organizations as well as the health facilities that have had to actually close down. And, um, and due to this, we have seen platforms that have been introduced online. Like we have um, platforms like uh, the Safe to Choose, uh, platforms that young girls and women can actually speak to a counsellor online and get the comprehensive information that they need as well as referral to get um, the services. And also because of, um, because of COVID, we have seen a great fear, especially in, in the young girls and women going to the hospitals and through platforms like this, the online ones, they will ensure that the access to comprehensive information still remains very key and is still provided. Most people will go to the online platforms because outside there there's a lot of stigma. There's self-stigma, there's stigma by the community, there's stigma by the people working in the facilities including the healthcare providers themselves. The stigma by the media, there are all types of stigma, yeah? So when you go, when you, if you are able to access um, services and information from online platforms, that's a major plus because on online platforms you are assured of the reduction of that stigma. No one will know what you're trying to access and you'll feel even comfortable asking very confidential questions. I know one uh, of safe abortion. Yeah, I do know of a couple of them. Actually, even when you go on Google and type how do or how or where do I access um, safe abortion services from, uh, the top uh, maybe organizations or platforms that are going to pop up will include uh, Safe to Choose, MSK, IPASS, and the likes. Yeah. Um, I know of such platforms, such as Safe to Choose. It's, an, it's a platform where I have referred friends and they've gotten professional guidance on accessing abortion services. I know a number of platforms that offer information on abortion and even SRHR services. Uh, the, first, the first platform is Nena Nabinti, because Nena Nabinti links young people with information and also services. Number two, we also have platforms such as Pinkshoes, Pinkshoes.org. Pinkshoes, it's, a very, it's also anonymous and young people can access information and services. I also know of Auntie Jane. I know some and just to mention, one is uh, Safe Choose, uh, another one is Nenana Binti, recently came out. Uh, it's an online hotline. Uh, I know Pinkshoes. Uh, yeah.